what is up guys and we are back with another video and in today's video we are going to be breaking down how damage works in genshin impact that way you're getting the most value out of your characters and there's a reason i'm bringing this up right now because usually when you build your character it's pretty straightforward you know you got your flower you got your feather and then your three main pieces so when it comes to these three main pieces most of the time you're just running attack percent the element that they have and then crit rate or crit damage depending on which one you need but now with the introduction of new characters as well as new weapons that just give so much damage bonus, a lot of people are finding that going attack percent instead of the specific element can be more useful. So I'm going to go ahead and break it all down that way going forward, especially in the future, if more and more characters and weapons come out, you guys are going to be ready. And honestly guys, calculating damage at Genshin is very simple and straightforward. So let's start from the very beginning at base attack. So when you arrive at the character screen and go to the details page, this white number right here is going to be your base attack. And basically this number is your character's base attack plus your weapon base attack. So for example, a level 90 Ayaka has 342 base attack. And then the weapon I have has a base attack of 674. So when you take those two numbers, you get this 1016. And again, this number doesn't change with anything else other than your character's base attack and weapon. Some people have this misconception that your feather actually counts towards your base attack. But I'm going to go ahead and remove my Ayaka's feather. And then we're going to go back to the details page and you guys can see right here it's still 1016 but the number that changed is this green number right here now this green number right here is the combination of all the other attack values meaning attack percentage as well as flat attack so let's go ahead and break down my ayaka's green number so since i'm using the mist splitter i'm not going to be getting any attack percentage from the weapon so i'm getting 5.8 percent from my flower i'm getting 15.7 from my feather i'm getting 46.6 percent from my sands and then I'm not getting any from my goblet as well as my circlet. So in total, I'm getting 68.1% attack percentage from my weapon and my artifact substats. So when we take that 61.8% and multiply it by our base attack, we're only getting a 691 green number. The rest of that green number is coming from our flat attack values. So to our 691, let's go ahead and add 39. Let's go ahead and add 311. None here. 14 here. And none here. So when we add all those up, we get 1056, and then when we combine that with our base attack, it gives our character's total attack value, and for me, that's going to be 2073. Now that we know our total attack for the character, we can go ahead and start calculating for damage. And just to keep it simple, we're just going to be using Ayaka's E ability. So all you have to do is take your attack and multiply it by this skill damage number right here, and then multiply that by the damage bonus you're getting. And it sounds simple enough, but damage bonus is actually the most important part, so let's go ahead and break that down. Now damage bonus is the combination of all the different types of damage bonus your character is getting, not including your attack percent, flat attack, and crit damage. So for example, with Mist Splitter, it's going to include all these damage bonus numbers right here. And then if we look at Ayaka's talents, if I use my E ability, I'm also getting a 30% normal and charge attack damage bonus. So this is also going to be included, assuming I used it. And on top of that, any elemental damage bonus or physical damage bonus you're getting from your goblet is also going to be applied. And honestly, a super easy way to tell if something's being included in the damage bonus calculation or not is to just see if it says damage next to the name. So for example, this says cryo damage with the three letters. And then if we look at Ayaka's talent, it also says increased damage. So that's when you know something's being included. So you guys can see, especially with characters like Ayaka and the new weapon, we can quickly stack up our damage bonus to crazy amounts. So this brings me to the most important point of the video, which is the law of diminishing returns. And in the most simple terms, what that means is the more you put into something, the less effective it's going to be. And instead of whipping out the charts and explaining the math behind that, I'm just going to go ahead and use Ayaka as an example and show you guys why attack percentage might actually be more beneficial than going cryo damage bonus because we have so much of it. And honestly, it's not right for me to say that she's getting too much cryo damage bonus. I think the better way to say it is I'm just getting too much damage bonus in general. Because like we just talked about, damage bonus includes everything, including cryo damage, normal damage, charge damage, burst damage, whatever it may be, it's included. So let's go ahead and add everything together to see how much my Ayaka is doing right now with all the damage bonus that she has. So like we talked about at the beginning of the video, we take our total attack number, we multiply it by our skill damage number, and then we multiply that by our damage bonus. And I'm going to put it up on screen for you guys. Right now, my Ayaka is getting 166% damage bonus. I'm just going to round that up to 170% just to make it simple. So when we add all of that together, my Ayaka is doing around 14,000 damage with her E ability. And again, this isn't including crit damage. This is a non-crit number. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to an attack percent cup. And we're going to do the damage calculations again to show you guys the difference. 
So when I switch over to an attack percentage cup, my attack goes from 2073 to 2566, but I am losing that 46.6% damage bonus from the cryo damage cup. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw it back and switch over to an Excel sheet. Hopefully you guys can see all the numbers I zoomed in for you guys. And again, these are the same numbers that we just broke down. This is the total attack values as well as the total damage bonus we're getting for an attack percent cup and a cryo damage cup. And then this right here is just your E ability. And now these numbers right here is what's important. And this is how I'm going to showcase how the law of diminishing returns works. And again, like I mentioned earlier, all that means is the more you have of something, the less effective it's going to be. So as you guys can tell right now, my cryo damage is hitting harder than my attack percentage cup. And the damage difference is about 1500. But what happens when we boost up our damage bonus even further? So for example, maybe we had a character that had cryo ascension and they got an additional 30% cryo damage. Or maybe you're using someone like Kazuo who boosts your damage and you get another 30%. So for example, let's go ahead and just bump up our cryo damage to 200%. And just like that, as you guys can tell, even though our total damage number is still higher, look at the difference. It's getting closer and closer. Before it was 1500, now it's only 800. And you guys can tell the more my damage bonus goes up, the lower the difference becomes. So the higher I go, the lower it becomes, and then up to a point where attack percentage is actually gonna overtake cryo damage bonus. So hopefully that was a clear enough example of how the law of diminishing returns works and how it affects your character's damage. And again, I wanna emphasize this fact that this is gonna be a lot more important, especially in the future of the game, because if they do introduce characters that just give you a crazy amount of damage bonus, then honestly going attack percentage might be a valuable option. So again, if you have a character that gives a lot of damage bonus, such as Ayaka, such as Kaching, and such as Shao, you guys can go ahead and calculate to see if it's actually worth switching over to attack percentage or something like that. A really great example would be Shao because, because most people are under the assumption his best set is 2-piece Viridescent and 2-piece Gladiator. But you can even make the case for some Shaos that the best set might be 2-piece Gladiator and then 2-piece of the new set, which also gives attack percentage. And the reason I say this for Shao is because he also gets a lot of damage bonus on his burst, 86.1%, and then his passive talent also gives him 25% damage bonus. And also one really important thing is the law of diminishing returns applies to everything, not just elemental damage bonus. This also applies if you have too much attack percentage, this also applies if you have too much crit damage, because those are the three main variables in calculating your damage. We already took a look at damage bonus as well as attack percentage, but let's go ahead and close it off by just quickly talking about crit damage. And crit damage is the easiest one, you just take the crit damage number that you have and then you multiply it by the damage number you got from our non-crit number. And that pretty much wraps it up for the video as well. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Maybe it helped, maybe it didn't. Maybe you learned something new. Maybe you're gonna change up your build. Who knows? Let me know down below. But thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.